And Kyle, glad to have Kyle here today. God bless you. Didn't mean to overlook anybody. Let's go to the Word of the Lord this morning. Go to the book of Matthew, chapter number 11, for our scripture reading. Matthew, chapter number 11, verse number 1. Read just a few verses of scripture here. If you would open and look with me in the word of the Lord this morning. Matthew, chapter number 11, verse number 1 through 6. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 11 verse 1, And it came to pass when Jesus had made an end of commanding his twelve disciples, he departed thence to teach and to preach in their cities. Verse 2, Now when John had heard in the prison the works of Christ, he sent two of his disciples and said unto him, Art thou he that should come, or do we look for another? Jesus answered and said unto them, Go, and show John again those things which you do see and hear. Hear and see. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised up, and the poor have the gospel preached unto them. Verse 6 is our scripture text this morning. And blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. Would you just lift your hand toward heaven, towards this way this morning, ask the Lord to anoint us. God, we thank you for the privilege to be in your house on this day. Thank you for this day and your blessing, Lord, and bringing us together as your people. Lord, I look at your people this morning, and I know that I'm unworthy to stand before your people. But God, I thank you for your grace, and I thank you for your anointing. I pray that you touch us, Lord, that you bless our hearts to receive from your word this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. The Bible says as they departed, John began to speak, or Jesus began to talk to the multitude and to say to the multitude concerning John. As we look at what Jesus says about John, And as he uh, commends him and talks about the life of this man, we can honestly say, amen, it was not that there was some great weakness in this man. It shows us that he is a normal man, amen, he has been cast in prison. The reason that he's in prison is because he was such a man of of, uh, strict principles, and wasn't afraid to say, amen, what was on his heart. Praise God. The Bible says that Jesus said in verse 11 of our chapter here, he said that among women there hath not risen a greater than John the Baptist. And so John here, amen, it's not that there's a great flaw in his life. No, it's because, amen, he's found himself in a place where he doesn't necessarily enjoy. Or want to be. You see here, amen, doubt and confusion. Amen. Because he said, are you he that should come or do we look for another? I like what Jesus said. Amen. I'm preaching this morning on blessed is he who is not offended in me. That's what Jesus said. But I like what he said to the disciples of John. He said, go show John again. Amen. Go show John again. I heard somebody preach one time on said, uh, don't look for another, just take another look. Praise God. Go show John again. The Bible tells us in uh, Luke chapter number 7, amen, that uh, the disciples of John showed him all these things. And John calling unto them, to, to, unto him, two of his disciples said, uh, sent them to Jesus, are, are you he that should come or look we for another? When the men were come, they said, John the Baptist has sent us to thee, saying, Art thou he that should come or look for another? And in the same hour he cured many of their infirmities and plagues and of evil spirits, <clears throat> and unto many that were blind 
he gave sight. Then Jesus answered and said unto them, Go your way and tell John what things ye have seen and heard. Hallelujah. Go and tell him what you saw and heard, and uh, that all these things happen. And blessed is he who is not offended in me. And I want to preach to us this morning, if the Lord will help me for a little while. I just want to just get in the way here and not, not last too long, hopefully, and just, amen, see as the Lord would speak to our hearts. It's not always the way we want it to be. Amen. There's a lot of people that's not serving the Lord today because they was offended in the Lord. Because it wasn't always easy. Because what they faced in life was confusing. There's a lot of people that would tell you today, they've told me, you know, I just don't understand why God allowed that to happen. Well, we, we won't always understand why God allows things to happen. And God is all-powerful, and he can stop things from happening. He could have kept John from being cast in prison. He could have kept him from getting his head cut off. He could have delivered him, but he allowed this to happen. Amen. And in allowing this to happen, he said, Tell John, blessed is he whosoever is not offended in me. Those who are not offended, amen, in what I have allowed to happen in their life. And so John is preaching there, amen, on the shores of Galilee. And all men come to him, would hear him preach. The Roman soldiers come to him, hear him preach. And the, and, and John would tell them, uh, amen, what they was doing wrong. He wasn't afraid of the Roman soldiers. Amen. The Pharisees come to him. He said, you bunch of snakes. Amen. You're crooked. You're, you're evil. And, uh, here come one day this, uh, chariot, no doubt, Herod. The Bible tells us that Herod had been married to his brother's wife and had taken her. And John wasn't no more scared of that king. And this man ruled that whole region. And John said, it's not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. He threw John in prison. Amen. For preaching the gospel. Now wait a minute. He told him the truth. Amen. Surely God would stand for his servant. Surely. Amen. God would deliver him from the prison because he's in prison because he preached the truth. He's in prison for standing for what was right. Ultimately, John had his head cut off. Ultimately, his life was taken from him. And the last words that we have record of that John ever heard the Lord, amen, or the message that he ever heard from the Lord was what I'm preaching on this morning. Blessed is he whosoever is not offended in me. Brother and sister, I know times we go through troubles in life. Amen. And one thing that makes it so hard or one thing that the devil uses against us or one thing that we use against ourselves is the knowledge that we know God could change it. Right? We know that God could change our situation. We know that one touch of his hand, everything would go, whether it be sickness, disease, amen, financial troubles or problems or, or whatever type of prison we're in. Amen. I, I thank the Lord that I've preached in the prison for several years and I love that, but I realize I'm not preaching in the prison, so to speak, this morning like I have at Henderson for years. Amen. As the Lord's helped me. Amen. But I'm preaching to those in prison this morning. Amen. You might be in prison to pain. You might be in prison to fear. You might be in prison some type of limitations. You see, that's what prison is. It's a limitation, you know, wanting to do more. Amen. All through the Bible, you know, you may not be behind bars. Amen. Like Paul the Apostle was for so many years for preaching the gospel. It may not be, amen, a, a natural prison, but many times we find ourselves in a spiritual prison or a physical prison or financial prison or or, amen, family problems or situations. And, you know, I know every one of us could be facing something different. I come to you this morning with a burden on my heart. Amen. To preach to you a simple message. Jesus said, blessed is he whosoever is not offended in me. Wouldn't it have been a whole lot better if Jesus would have sent the word back? Go tell John in a few days, I'm going to come down there with all my power. I'm going to bust that prison open and I'm going to let him go free and let him go back to his ministry. But Jesus knew that wasn't the plan of God. Jesus knew that in a few days, uh, amen,
amen, the sandals of a Roman soldier was going to clack on that concrete floor and a key was going to stick in there and they weren't going to be letting John go free. Instead, they going to have a sword and they going to take him to the chopping block and they was he was going to have to lay his head down. Amen. They are going to cut his head off for what he had told Herod. Amen. Jesus knew, amen, that the drums was fixing to beat in Herod's palace because it was Herod's birthday. Amen. Jesus knew, amen, that the guitars and the organs was fixing to play and that daughter of that wicked woman was going to come out and dance. And you know the story. The Bible says she was before instructed of her mother. Amen. That mother knew that Herod was going to say, what gift do you want? Amen. What do you want? Are you going to ask for a, amen, a diamond? Are you going to ask for a ruby? We learned about rubies in Sunday school this morning. The Bible says wisdom is better than rubies. Amen. You're going to ask for a precious jewel. What is she going to ask for? She said, listen to me, daughter. Amen. When the king says, what do you want? Amen. I want you to ask for the head of John the Baptist in a charger. Amen. Jesus knew those words was coming. Amen. I'll take the head of John the Baptist in a charger. Amen. This was family to Jesus. Hallelujah. I want you to know. Amen. Jesus had told John, blessed is he whosoever is not offended in me. Listen, the plan of God doesn't always make sense to us. There's people that's not serving God today because they've been offended in the Lord. They've been hurt with what God allowed to happen in their life. Friend, I know it's not always easy. Let's look at this in the prison. Amen. In the prison. Uh, think about 2 Corinthians chapter number 12. The Apostle Paul talks about having visions and ascending up into paradise, heard things which is not lawful to other. He said, um, though I would desire to glory, amen. He goes on, he said, but lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of revelation that was given to me, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to buffet me, amen, to come against me, to attack me, amen, lest I should be exalted above measure. Here's the Apostle Paul. Amen. We're not talking about a new Christian, brothers and sisters. We're talking about a seasoned saint. We're talking about a man of God. Amen. Who had preached to kings. Amen. Who had preached to thousands. Who had God had used him to raise the dead. Who God had used him. Y'all know when that man fell out of the fell out of the roof and Paul laid his hands on him and God brought him back to life. Amen. God had used him in a mind way. Amen. And here was this man of God oh, who now has a thorn in the flesh. Amen. A messenger of Satan. We don't know what it was. The Bible doesn't say what it was. Amen. Did y'all read where, what it said what it was? Amen. I, I, I couldn't find where it said what it was. I've heard people say it was Paul's eyesight. Amen. Commentators and different ones believe that Paul couldn't see good and it was his eyesight. Amen. It, don't, it may have been his eyesight. Somebody else said it was because Paul was short. And because he was a short man. Well, I don't know if I believe that, but you know, some people face different problems. It could have been. We don't know. But I believe this. I believe this with all of my heart that it was not written down for a reason. And did you know that the thorn in Paul's flesh could be the very thing you're facing? It could be the very thing that I'm facing. We don't know. Amen. It could be the very thing. It could be family problems, financial problems, sickness, or a memory. Others said it was the memory of Stephen's death. Uh, amen. Others said, uh, amen, that it was just all the, I don't know what it was. Uh, amen. But I know one thing. Hallelujah. Blessed is he who is not offended in me. Uh, he said, I besought the Lord three times. Uh, three different times Paul went to prayer. Uh, amen. You're talking about a praying man. Uh, amen. He had met the Lord. Uh, Amen. On the road to Damascus. Amen. Hallelujah. He said he had ascended up into the third heaven. Amen. Abundance of revelations was given unto him. He wasn't afraid to stand for the truth. Amen. He stood for the truth before. Amen. King Agrippa. He stood before, he stood before that governors. Amen. He stood before even Peter the apostle when he was to be blamed for, you know, a little bit of hypocrisy. You know what I'm talking about.
about. Amen. He stood. He wasn't afraid. And yet here he has this thorn in the flesh. Oh, God help us. I'm talking about blessed is he who is not offended in me. Brothers and sisters, you'll go through things. Amen. You don't understand. Amen. You'll face things you don't understand. Can I get a witness this morning? It ain't always easy. It ain't always fun. Sometimes it's a prison house. Oh, God. Amen. Sometimes it's a prison house. A prison of pain. A prison of a prison of hurt and misunderstandings. Amen. But Jesus said, you go tell John. Amen. Let the blind see. Woo. Go tell John that the lame are getting up and throwing their crutches down. Hallelujah. Go tell John that the dead are being raised. Tell John that the lame are walking, that the deaf are hearing. Tell him all those things. Hey, boys, wait just a minute. Tell him one more thing from me. Tell him one more thing. Woo! I'm telling you, those guys come down there. Amen. And Jesus was a healing them. He was casting out devils. And Jesus said, go show John all that you've seen. And tell him all these things. He said, but tell him one more thing. <laughs> tell him one more thing. What do you want us to tell him? Tell him, blessed is he who is not offended in me. Oh, I'm sorry this morning. Amen. But I've seen saints of God weep. I've seen saints of God cry. And I shook my head, brother and sister. And I said, God, I don't understand why you're letting them go through it. God, I don't understand why this. God, I don't understand why this is coming. God, I don't understand. I've stood beside. Amen. Grave sides. Amen. As they lowered the loved one in the ground. And I shook my head and said, God, I don't understand it. I would have thought that had been a better plan. Amen. But the Lord said, go tell him. Go tell John. Right before he loses his head, you give him a message for me. You give him a word for me. You tell him, blessed. Blessed is he who's not offended in me. You may not always understand it, John, but keep on trusting me. Keep on believing me. Hallelujah. Even in that prison. Amen. You can hear the sound of those boys are coming back. <laughs> Woo! Rattling that cage. Hallelujah, Brother John. We come back. Hallelujah. Did you find Jesus? Oh, yeah, we found him. Amen. The multitudes was there. Glory to God. They was having revival. Oh, John. Amen. Blind people were seeing. The Bible says many that was blind. Not just one. Not just too many. Amen. Blind people were seeing John. We saw things like we never seen before. People who couldn't walk and was crippled up. They was getting up and walking. Woo! I can see old John sitting up at the edge of his cell. My! What else did you see? The dead was raised up, John. The dead, they was dead, they was raised up. Wow! My God help us. Amen. The deaf was hearing. Amen. They couldn't hear. They were signing to them. All of a sudden they could hear. All all these miracles was taking place. Woo! What Jesus say when you ask him? Amen, John. Jesus said to tell you all these things are happening. That the poor has the gospel preached to them, John. Amen. You go tell. He said to tell you all these things. Hallelujah. But John, there's one more thing. Oh, hallelujah. I know in my imagination, I can see John. He's got his hands up. Come on now. Hey man, it may have not been this. He's just a worshiping God. Woo! Oh, hallelujah! Surely, if he can raise the dead, he can get me out of this prison. Woo! Hallelujah! I can see John. Hey man, just sitting there a little bit. Hey man, as they're telling him all these good things. Woo! Glory to God. Hallelujah, John. Brother John. Brother John, there's one more thing he said. Brother John, there's one more thing. What'd he say? He said to tell you something. We don't really understand it, John. But he told us to give you a message. He told us to tell you, blessed is he. Whosoever is not offended in me. Hallelujah. Glory to God. John, hold on. Amen. You might lose your head, but it'll be worth it. I want to tell you, saints of God, you may go through the valley, but hold on in the valley. Amen. Don't get offended in the valley. You might misunderstand God. You might even go out to the graveyard. Hallelujah. And bury your loved one. Does that mean he's not the healer? No, it don't mean he's not the healer. It just might mean it wasn't God's will. 
amen, to heal. Hallelujah. But I'm telling you, don't get offended. He besought the Lord three times, the apostle Paul did, and he said unto me, my grace is sufficient Woo, for thee. My grace is sufficient for thee. Amen. Think about Joseph in the prison. Amen. He was lied on. He was sold by his brothers. Amen. He had every right to get bitter. Amen. It wasn't Joseph's fault that he was a spoiled brat. He was his daddy's pick because he was born when he was his dad was an old man. Hallelujah. He made him that coat of many colors. Y'all know the story. He's a dream in those dreams. He tells his brothers those dreams. He's a coming out through the field. They said, let's kill this dreamer of dreams. Let's kill him. Oh, God. The hatred that they had for him. You know people can hate you and it's not your fault. Hallelujah. You might be facing problems this morning. Amen. Situations and family or whatever. And it is not even your fault. It wasn't Joseph's fault. They threw him in the pit. That's going to kill him. Y'all know. Reuben talked him into it to pull him out. But here come this band of Midianites, Ishmaelites going down to Egypt. And they sold him to him. Hallelujah. Amen. They dipped that coat. Y'all know the story. I'm talking about blessed is he whosoever is not offended in me. <laughs> Here goes this little boy who had never, he wasn't even wet behind the ears. Come on. I mean, I'm talking about young. Still a little kid comes out there. I think I said that wrong. He was still wet behind the ears. <laughs> Praise God. Y'all still with me today? Goes down to Potiphar's house. Ah, oh, you know, Joseph, you know, God has forsaken you. Oh no, Joseph done the best he could wherever he was. Raised him up in Potiphar's house. The Bible said, but the Lord was with Joseph. Amen. Here comes the devil. I'm going to destroy him now. Potiphar's wife cast her eyes on him. Lay with me. Lie with me. Joseph said, how can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? Oh, amen. He comes in there. She grabs him by the coat. Come on now. Hallelujah. She got him by the coat. Nobody else was in the house. Here's your prime opportunity. Let me tell you something Joseph said. He might have not said it, but it might, he might, he should have said it. Hallelujah. Thought it. He thought, I done lost one coat. You can have that one too. Hallelujah. My dad made me a coat. I can see him thinking, that coat don't mean nothing to me. He come right out of the coat. He ran out of there. She lied on him. Has anybody ever been lied on? Don't raise your hand. Amen. He was lied on. They threw him in prison. Joseph, you better get bitter now. Oh, no. The Bible said the Lord was with Joseph. He became the ruler of the prison. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One day these boys come down there. Y'all know the story. Hallelujah. I'm talking about blessing. It's he who is not offended in me. Come down there. One of them's the butler. One of them's the baker. A dream. A dream to dream. Hallelujah. I don't know how long it had been since Joseph had dreamed a dream. But God was reminding him of his dreams. The Bible said that they dream. He come in there one day and there's all, there's all down there. I said, what's wrong with you? He said, we both dreamed a dream last night. What is it? Tell me to, tell it to me. Joseph interpreted the dream. He told that butler, he said, I gotta tell you something. He said, when you get out of here, he said, remember me. He said, I'm here, I'm here by mistake. I'm innocent. I, I am innocent. I don't belong here. Get me out of here. Say something to Pharaoh. Get me out of this prison, this dungeon. The Bible said that the butler forgot him. I ask you, have you ever been lied on? Have you ever been forgotten? It wasn't one day he was forgotten. It was two years. Two years he was forgotten. Oh, one morning Pharaoh got up. Here comes the man with that cup. What's wrong? Oh, something's bad wrong with Pharaoh. Oh, God help us. 
Hallelujah. What's wrong? He dreamed a dream. That man's a holding that cup in his hand. And he realizes, oh, I forgot. I forgot that old Hebrew boy down there. Amen. Surely he's offended by now, Brother Curtis. Amen. Surely he's broken down. I've seen people go through one thing right after another, right after another, right after another. Amen. Are you the one or do I look for another? Doubt and confusion. Amen. In the prison house. Amen. But Joseph wasn't. Uh, no, sir. Joseph wasn't offended. I'm going to read y'all one scripture right here. I want to read to you what he says in Genesis, amen, chapter number 41, amen, and y'all know the whole story, when his brothers even came to him, he wasn't offended there, he said, ye meant it for evil, but God turned it to good, God meant it to good, hallelujah, amen, he comes before Pharaoh, Pharaoh sit and called Joseph, and in Genesis 41, and I'm almost done, I'm preaching this morning on blessed is he who is not offended in me, you're going to go through things you don't understand, amen, uh, John the Baptist, uh, amen, blessed is he who's not offended Joseph here, uh, amen, they brought him hastily out of the dungeon, shaved himself, changed his raiment, came in unto Pharaoh, Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I have dreamed a dream, and there's none that can interpret it, I heard say of thee that thou canst understand dreams to interpret it, uh, listen to what Joseph said, see if it sounds like he's offended, Joseph answered Pharaoh saying, it is not in me, but God! God, hallelujah, amen, shall give Pharaoh an answer of peace, amen, here's a man, he may have lost some coats, hallelujah, one of them was a coat of many colors, amen, hand tailored by his own precious father, amen, another one was down there in Potiphar's house, amen, a coat of authority, amen, they wore their clothing for authority, amen, he lost his authority, amen, now he's down here in the dungeon, he may have lost some coats. Come on, church. He may have lost some amen reputation. Hallelujah. Amen. He lost his friends and his family. But one thing he hadn't lost, he hadn't lost his faith in God. He said, it's not me, but God shall give Pharaoh an answer of peace. Amen. God took him, amen, from the cabin to the castle overnight. Hallelujah. Took him from the prison to the palace overnight. Listen, God can turn a mess, amen, right around, oh, hallelujah, in one moment. Amen, we, we must never get offended in God. Glory to God. The doubt and confusion that the devil tries to bring in our mind, cast it out in Jesus' name and say, though God slay me, yet will I trust in him. Hallelujah. That's what Job said. Amen. It's why I said, curse God and die, Job. Curse God and die, Job. He said, you talk like a foolish woman. We receive good at the hand of God. Shall we not receive evil at the hand of God? And then in Job chapter number 13, he said, though he slay me, yet I'm going to trust in him. Amen. I'm not going to get offended in God no matter what. No matter what. There's a song that says, I've been through the fire. I've been through the flood. I've been down in the valley. Stuck in the mud. Had to look up. Can I get a witness this morning? Just to see bottom. Oh, you come in the house of God say, man, look at them people. They got it all right. They got everything right. Look at how they worship. Look at how they sing. You don't know what that saying that God's been through. You don't know the tears that fell on the pillow. You don't know the doctor's visits. You don't know the graveyard visits. You don't know. Hallelujah. But blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. Been through the fire. Been through the flood. Been down in the valley. Been stuck in the mud. Had to reach up. Just a touch bottom. If you're looking for stories, brother, I've got them. But I ain't going to give up. I ain't going to give up on God. Woo! Been busted and bruised. Battered and torn. Walked through the desert. Weary and worn. Now y'all going to like this one right here. Had me some biscuits without any gravy. 
Woo! But in every situation, the hand of God fed me. Come on, church. And then the songwriter says, but I ain't going to give up. I ain't going to give up on God. Woo! <laughs> Hallelujah. I didn't come here to explain your child. I can't explain your child. I didn't come here to explain your test. I can't explain your test. Hallelujah. I didn't come here to explain why God allowed it to happen. Hallelujah. I can't understand it all. But I know the word of God said, Blessed is he who's not offended in me. Church, if the devil can get us to blame God, Hallelujah. If he can get us to blame God. Hallelujah. If he can get us to give up on God. But I ain't going to give up. Can I get a witness? Why would I turn around on God? Why would I give up on God? I've had them tell me, I ain't going to serve God. He let such and such happen. Hallelujah. Why would I serve God? He took my family away from me. Why would I serve God when such and such happened? Friend, that's all the more reason to serve the Lord. I'm not going to give up on God. Hallelujah. The Bible said in all this, Job sinned not nor charged God foolishly. Hallelujah. I know God could have done it different. I know God could have changed it. Oh, hallelujah. But for some reason, this is his purpose. And for some reason, this is his plan. And for some reason, hallelujah. Woo, glory to God. I'm going to trust him with all of my heart. And I'm going to serve him. And I'm going to live for him. And I'm going to do the best that I can. Hallelujah, hallelujah. There's people here this morning, you may not know that song, but I'm going to say it for you. Praise God, I've been busted and bruised, battered and torn, walked through the desert, weary and worn. Oh, God, you've had some biscuits without any gravy, so to speak. Amen. You've not always had everything you wanted. It was not always on a silver platter. Amen. But if we could just not be offended in him, oh, God, I don't understand it but God has a plan hallelujah and when his plan is done we're going to be so happy Woo! listen God can take bad situations and turn it for his glory God can take hurtful situations and turn it for his glory God can take confusing situations and turn it for his glory God can take sorrow and turn it into joy. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus said, Your sorrow shall be turned into joy. Now, listen, only God has that power, brother and sister. Hallelujah. I could trade you. You have an old junky coat. I could trade you a good coat for an old junky one. Amen. If I had that, you know, I could trade you. I could swap and you might come out better on the deal. I could do that. I might could give something to you. But I don't have the power to transform something. God has the power to transform. He didn't say, I'm going to take your sorrow and trade it for joy. Y'all still here? He didn't say, I'm going to take your sorrow and swap it. He said, I'm going to take your sorrow and through my power, I'm going to turn it into joy. Blessed be the name of the Lord this morning. Stand together with me. I'm out of time. Hallelujah. I ain't going to give up on God. Blessed is he whosoever is not offended in me. It may not make sense this morning. Amen. You might hear the sound of the Roman soldiers coming. Amen. Banging on the floor. Hallelujah. They may have a sword in their hand, so to speak. John the Baptist is fixing to lose his head. But as he walks down the aisle, as he walks down the hallway of that old prison, as he walks to the chopping block, he hears the words, 
rehearsed over and over and over and over and over. Blessed is he. Whosoever shall not be offended in me. Now listen, I don't know how to give this altar call this morning. Well, I'm going to make it kind of general here today. You're here and you need encouragement from God. You're here and you need a touch from the Lord. You may not understand why the sorrow you've got it may not make sense to you why it happened just the way it did. <laughs> Tears may fall on the pillow at night. <laughs> the heartache, the pain. I'd like to pray with you this morning. I know you're here today. I'd like for you to come. I'd like to pray with you this morning. I'd like for you to step out and come. Need help from the Lord. You need help from the Lord speak into your heart today. I didn't say you was offended in God. I'd like to pray with you this morning. You're facing a trial. You're facing a test. Yes, you are.